make sure that's all working. Possibly. One day it'll pop up. I think. There we go. Cool. I have a fan going this evening because it's very hot and it doesn't seem to be impacting the microphone very much, so that's good. That was the goal. Just gonna get my brushes and paints set here and we'll be good to go. I always like to start almost exactly a minute after I hit go on the stream. So I just do one last organization thing here. And we'll be off. We'll keep him off stream for now. All right. So today I am painting a Cruel Boys Gut Ripper. They're the new battle line unit for the orcs, uh, specifically for the Cruel Boys. Although, if rumors are to be believed, then for the orcs in general, since they should be able to ally up and fight. So here we go. We're going to use mostly contrast paint today. And we're going to start off with a blend. So we're going to start off with these two colors, Blood Angels Red and Griffhound Orange. We're going to open them both up because we're going to be blending them. And we'll get into it. So this is going to be on the shield. The shield is one of the most prominent parts of the miniature, so I figured I'd work uh, or do a little more work on the shield versus the rest of the miniature in terms of how it looks. So I'm just going to... Put this orange on here, making sure that it's pretty thick on there. Go about halfway down the shield, give or take. Then take some red. Blood Angel's red here. And I'm just going to put it on the rest of the shield here. Just make sure all the gaps are filled in. And then, oh, I'm going to make sure I do the rims first also, actually. Good. All right, then we're going to take our orange again, and we're just going to swipe down into the red like this. About like that, give or take, and then clean off the brush. And now with just a wet brush, no paint on it, just kind of feather the edges together. And then just make sure that we get the edge of this shield here. And the back side is also going to be orange, so we'll make sure to do that as well. Trying to avoid the rest of these details, if at all possible. These details will be darker than this color in the end, but... Nice to see that you got a review copy. Oh yeah, I should say, that's probably a good thing to mention. Uh, this was not, this is not a copy given to me by Games Workshop. Uh, this is the store copy for my friendly local game store. Um, if you... Um, if you order 30 copies, they sent each store a early copy to paint up for, to have a painted set on release day. And I am painting my store's copy. I should, uh, I should definitely have mentioned that in the beginning. That's my bad. But yeah, so this was not sent to me personally by Games Workshop. This was sent to my game store. And I was lucky enough to be the one to get to paint it up. So that's how I have the, that's how I have it early. Maybe one day, Games Workshop will send me boxes like this. But for now, just uh, <laughs> just getting it through my game store. All right, so we're going to let that blend dry on there. And we'll go on to the skin of the orc here. We're going to use, maybe, here we go, Militarum Green for the skin. Because um, normally I do the skin a bit more like a strong green, like a forest green or something. But these swamp works, I like uh, I like them being a little more brown leaning, just because they, you know, they're dirty. They live in swamp water, that sort of thing. Oh, I see. How well at least you still got got them, green boys. Yep, yep, I still got them. I try to. Uh, that basically, I try to acquire at least one of every new thing that comes out, um, and because. You know, my game store gets them a couple days early. Uh, I should also mention I work for the game store, so that makes it even easier. Um, because we get things a little bit early, I can take basically the the store copy of things and paint them up 
Usually when things come out on Saturday, we'll get them the Thursday before. Dominion is obviously different. They sent us a early copy on purpose. But usually just with how shipping works, we'll get things that release on Saturday on Thursday. And we carry a, or we like to carry a pretty big uh, collection of store miniatures. And so I get to take the store set home and paint it early for the channel. So it works out pretty well, to be honest. It works out for all parties. We get a nice advertising tool at the store. And I get to get my video up a little bit early. I usually put it up the day that the models actually come out. So, so yeah, kind of works out for all parties there. And I don't think I'm doing anything against GW's rules. As far as I understand it, the, the NDA or whatever ends a week before the pre-order date. So me putting up a video on release day shouldn't be a problem. Well, yeah. I mean, I also haven't signed any NDA, obviously. So, like, I wouldn't get in trouble in that sense, but my store might get in trouble if I was doing things too early, if we somehow had an advanced copy of something. But, uh, don't expect that to come up very often. Just making sure to get all of his... Trying to avoid the other parts, because we are going to use contrast paint on these. The uh, the contrast paints that we're going to use on the rest of him are darker, and so should cover this color no problem. But just to be on the safe side, trying my best to avoid touching the other spots too much. Okay. Get his feet here. I'm actually, hopefully, going to be playing a game tonight, later tonight, with these guys. The Cruel Boys. And we'll see how they go. Yeah, there's plenty of Dominion content out there. I think you're safe. Yeah, that, that was my assumption as well. Um, so many people who were given a, a review copy, like, on purpose, by Games Workshop, have stuff out there, so I figure... I'm pretty safe. I'm well behind most of them, so. But I hope, I don't, I can't promise for sure, but I hope to have either a stream or a video or something out on each, each different uh, unit from the box before release day. So that should be good. I don't know if I'll be able to stick to that, but I'm going to try. Try my best. There's not there's only that many units in the box. Um, I think there's seven on the orc side and maybe eight on the stormcast side. So that's 15, 15 videos. Four of them will be streams. So nine videos in two weeks. When I say it like that, it seems like a lot. But we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. All right, so we've got that on there. I'm going to do something easy that doesn't require anything to be dried to do it. So I'm going to do the spear shaft. For that, I'm going to use snakebite leather. Maybe not necessarily the uh, the color you think of when you think of a uh, a wood wooden spear shaft, but I like it as the color of the spear here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think it looks good as like a some swamp tree that they've cut down and used as the uh, used as their spear. there. Make sure all the bits are filled in. Okay. And he doesn't have any other wood on him. Just the spear shaft, so we're all good there. Alright, now we're going to move on to Gore Grunt of Fur. And we're going to do all the leather in this color. So that'll be all this here. Um, I'm going to do my best to avoid the belts and stuff. We are going to do the belts in a different color. Um, if I do hit them, it's not the end of the world, because we're going to do them in black, so the black should cover over this pretty well, but again, rather be safe than sorry, so try to avoid them at all possible. Basically, when I try to avoid, when I talk about avoiding things where possible with contrast paint, um, if it doesn't slow me down to avoid them, 
then I will. If I notice that I'm going significantly slower trying to avoid something that I don't really need to avoid, then I will just stop trying to avoid it. Um, but like this, going around these belts is not changing how fast I can get this done in any measurable way. So I will do my best to avoid them. And the one, I did paint one of these guys earlier just to practice the color scheme. And the one thing I realized I had forgotten was I forgot to get the back side of these, this leather that hangs down here. And the back side of this one as well. All right. What other leather does he have on him? He's got this. Some of them have leather up here and some of them have armor up here. So you just got to. Pay attention and notice which one's which. Usually the armor will have the characteristic rivets in it. Like that, those rivets, or whatever they are. So that's how I've been able to tell so far. Alright, I think, once I do that side there, that should be all the leather. Everything else is going to be black, That you like all this rope and stuff, that's all going to be black. I think we're ready to move on to that. So that's going to be Black Templar. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the last bit of contrast paint we're using on this guy. Is that right? I'm just trying to think. Does he have a tongue sticking out of his mouth? No. What I did earlier had a tongue, and so I had to use some contrast paint on him. But I think that might be it for the contrast paint on this guy. So anything that's still the color of the primer, we can uh, we cannot worry about. Anything that we've already painted, obviously, though, we want to be very careful around. Make sure to get that. On uh, on Wednesday, same time as this, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I'll be painting a Vindicator, which is one of the new Stormcast uh, battle line guys. And hopefully before then, I will have my video for Yendrasta out, the uh, the Angel Wing Lady for the Stormcast. That's the goal anyway, and I'll show you the color scheme I'm going with for these uh, these Stormcasts, because I painted a test model for them yesterday. So I'll show you the test model for them at the end of the stream. And I'm not being super duper careful, like, sometimes I'm... I'm going slightly over onto the skin in a couple places, but these guys are going to be in hordes and with a bunch of their other buddies, so I'm not super concerned about it. If I was painting for a competition or something, obviously I would, I'd be going back and fixing that, but just to get this done, because this all has to be done by July 3rd, so 60 miniatures in under two weeks is quite a pace, so I'm not concerned about being absolutely the highest fidelity paint jobs possible. Just concerned about getting it done. Still to, at the very least, tabletop quality, but uh, hopefully even a little bit higher than that, but we'll see. But when they're all lined up next to each other, they're... Uh, What's the saying? The the total is worth more than the sum of its parts. The whole is worth more than the sum of its parts. That's the idea we're going for here. All the pieces will look good, but then together they'll look great. Alright, then he's got a little bit of armband here. Just get that. Already got it on that side. He's got leg wrappings here. And then I think the black is done. 
And then we'll go on to highlighting the shield, applying the metal, highlighting the metal, and then I think that's really about it. We'll apply a wash at the end. Oh, we gotta highlight the skin. But yeah, we're we're chugging right along. This guy, um, this guy is a little less complicated than the test model I did. I accidentally, I think I did the the cha unit champion as my test model, which was maybe not the greatest idea, but you know, whatever. All right, now I'm switching brushes to my smaller brush. I'm using all the GW synthetic brushes for this. So I was using a medium. Now I'm using a small. No reason in particular other than I wanted to test them out. We just got them in at the game store. Um, and so I wanted to test them out so I could tell my customers how they worked. So I'm just painting all these, all the stitching that attaches two bits of leather. I'm painting that in the same color that we just painted the rope. I'm not exactly sure if these are supposed to be like giant staples or if they are stitching like I thought. I'm painting them like stitching. So we shall see. All right. Uh, these two, and I think there's some in the front here. Yep, there they are. We also have to do his eye patch. Yeah, and the test model I did had a helmet, so almost all the face detail was under the helmet, so we'll have to do some face detail on this guy also. So, maybe we're not quite as close to done as I thought originally, but... Oh, eye patch. And then just being careful on the string here. The new Games Workshop brushes, I don't know if they were designed specifically for contrast paint. I assume they weren't, but they hold and release contrast paint very well. It might just be my, might just be my, in my mind, it might not be doing anything different, but it feels like they are doing something different. Who knows for sure, though. All right, that's all the black done. So now we'll... We're going to highlight the shield, and the colored part of the shield, so we're going to use Fire Dragon Bright for this. We're going to highlight the whole thing, um, but we're going to do it sparingly. We're not going to edge highlight every single thing. We're going to start on the nose here and just kind of come around on the side there. And then we'll do a little eyebrow action here. And these are all going to get toned down by the wash that we apply, so... If I go a little too strong with them, I'm not going to be too upset about it because they will fix later. And we might have to cooking show it because, and I'll show you the other one, just because the wash does take a while to dry on these guys. So, and there are a couple steps after the wash. So, we'll probably cooking show it after I apply the wash. Just going to. A little more highlight there, and that's good. So there's some some very basic highlights on the on the shield. Then we will do the teeth on the shield. So for that we're gonna use Rackarth Flesh. And we're also gonna do his teeth that are sticking out. I'll actually grab his teeth first. There's just the two, one fang on each side. Like that. And like that. Good. And I'm not super worried about getting all the way in to the teeth. Like, they do have dimension, obviously. And I'm not worried about getting all the way down onto the, the flat surface behind them. I'm just painting basically the, the front of them here. I imagine that they aren't actually teeth. Like, on the orc's shield, I'm guessing it's just bits of metal that they've then painted. So... But who knows? Who knows what orcs might try to do? Maybe they are real teeth. Let's get the sides off there. 
and down there. All right, that's good. Then we're going to do the eyeball. And that's he's only got one. He's uh if if you notice when you look at these guys, um their shields match their own faces. So this guy has an eye patch, the shield has an eye patch. Um if the if the other guy has something else going on with his face, the shield will have that going on with his face. So it's a nice little small detail that I appreciated. So that I don't know if I showed the color, but that's uh that was the eyeball, and that's just Ushabti bone. The orc eye itself I'm gonna do in Avril and Sunset, I think. I think this is my eyeball color. Let's see. Nope. Not my eyeball color. What did I use? Oh, yes. Uriel, Uriel Yellow is what I used. So I'm just going to pinprick that in real quick. And then we'll get on to some more exciting things here. That'll work. Alright, so now we'll do the metal go back to my larger brush for this and for the metal we're gonna start off with iron warriors this is a quite a dark silver I think it fits well for orc colors I'm just gonna paint in all the metal plates as well as the larger rivets I'm gonna leave the smaller rivets and uh, the color that I'm gonna highlight this metal with is gonna be stormhost silver and I'm going to do all the small rivets in that color. So let me get these spikes on the shield in this metal as well. There we go. Do they carry on to the back at all? They do. Okay. Let's get those nice and silvered. Excellent. For the sides there, all right, and then the sword pommel sticking out here. Just trying to do the difficult stuff first, and then I'll end on the easy stuff. Like the uh, the spear tip is one of the easiest things to paint of the metal on this guy, so I'll end there. knee pad and this make sure if you're painting it this way that uh, you get right up to the edge here you don't want any you don't want any uh, primer showing from under or around this metallic if you you prime the miniature to handle the contrast paint the non-contrast paints can be a little tricky because you got to make sure you get right up to the edge and cover all that primer or it'll look really wonky later. All right, so now we'll do his armor panel here. I toyed around when I did my test model with doing the armor panel on the, sh on the shoulder, the same color as the shield, but it just seemed a little too colorful I liked the idea more of their shields are like their prized possessions. And so they uh, they put a lot of effort into their shields, but then their armor is just protection. And so they just leave that the bare metal that it is. All right, then spear sh or spear tip here. Just being careful down here at the bottom around the wood. And this should be drying up. Oh, I gotta get the little rivets on the, uh, or the big rivets, I mean, on the shield. Smooth that paint out a little bit. There we go. All right, and then, gotta grab these three here. Wonderful. One more. 
Excellent. All right. We're going to let that silver dry for just a second. We'll go on to Stormhost Silver in a moment, but we're going to go back to Rackarth Flesh because I forgot he has a skull hanging around his neck. So we're going to paint that in with this bone color we're using here. There we go. That'll work. Anything else bone on him? I don't think so. Nope. Okay. So now we can go back to Stormhost Silver. We're going to go back to our small brush for this. And so I'm just going to dot in these small rivets now. And um, I'm using the tip of the brush to do this, but if you're uncomfortable painting such a small detail like this, there is a technique you can use. And it's called painting with the bubble. And I'll see if I can show it to you on this brush here. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but the tip of the brush is much smaller than that dollop of paint I have on there. And so instead of touching the brush to the bit I'm going to paint, I'm just going to touch that bubble of paint to the rivet. And so I can be much more careful and make fewer mistakes. I'm pretty comfortable at this point painting with the actual tip of the brush, so I'm not going to keep doing it that way, but I did that for a long time, and for some things I still will paint with the, I call it painting with the bubble. Um, it just, when you push down with the brush, you flay the br bristles out, like, let's see if I can explain this, I'll use a bigger brush to show it. So when you push down with the brush, the bristles flay out like that, and so you can Instead of just getting a dot where you want it, you can end up getting kind of a, a swoosh. And so painting with the, the bubble prevents that. By just having the paint touch the plastic and come off, you have no, no part of the brush is actually touching the model. So it can be useful if you're not as comfortable with tiny details. Um, it can also just be useful if you don't want to worry about what you're doing as much. I will often still paint with the the bubble. So now I'm just kind of highlighting a couple spots everywhere on the silver. Painting in rivets where I need to. Let's get the uh, armor up here. I'm just putting a dot in the big rivets and then touching the little rivets. Uh, let's see. Uh, spikes here. I'll just touch each one back here and I'll do a little swipe on each of them. And then here on the spear tip, I'll just go along the edge like that, go along the back, and then do a little right down the center there. Touch the rivets and other side, line down the back, line down the teeth, and then a little line right down the center. Touch the rivets, done. And I'll get the tip of this, there we go. I think... That will do it for the silver. So now I think we're ready for the wash, actually. Let's see. Have I done everything? I'm going to do, actually, another layer of Rackarth flesh on that skull on his chest. Looks like I painted it with gray, not bone color at all. So let me just come back in. Ah, oh, yes, that's much better. I think I probably just had too much water on my brush the first time. There we go. All right. Just get put a little too bit too little too much paint on here, so I lost detail in the eye. There we go. That's better. All right. So this needs to dry for just a couple more seconds. Ah. Highlight the skin. So for that, we're going to use Scarsnick Green. I believe Scarsnick is actually a somehow related to the orcs. I don't know exactly who or what it is, but it sounds orcish. So I'm just going to highlight anywhere that's a really sharp edge on the skin. So nostrils here, the lips. Uh, you saw I did the ear. Um, I'll do these like veins or just muscles bulging in the neck, and I'll do the jawline here. And the peck right here. And then the rib, and the abdominal muscle, 
do the peck over here. And then, let's see, do the top of the ears. Any veins that are sticking out, I'll do those. I'll do the heels. Put more paint on this brush. There we go, the heels. I'll do the toes. Just like that. And the kneecap. And then the fingers. And I'll get right there. Just a little swipe. No veins bulging on this guy. Just get this muscle right here. Whatever muscle that happens to be. The uh, test model I did had a bulging vein, and so I highlighted that. But, alright, so... He's basically done now before the wash step, if the camera will focus on him. Maybe. There we go. I think I was just off to the side too much. Alright, so now... We're going to grab our wash. And we're going to hope that's every, that everything is dry. I'm pretty sure it is. Probably dry enough. And we're just going to start applying this all over the miniature. We want to apply this consistently. We don't want it to pool too much in one area. We want to work section by section. Not doing half a section, like half a shield, and then moving on to a different part and then coming back. That's how we get tide lines, tide marks. So we want to do entire areas at once, then come back. Just working the way down here. And as you can see, this is, I mean, obviously we're using Agrax Earth Shade, so it's browning everything up. But it's giving this, giving the skin tone a really nice brownish green hue. It's tarnishing the metal just enough, in my opinion, to still make it read as a iron or some kind of silver metal, but still be dirty and tarnished and brown. And then it's going into the all the recesses on the shield it works really nice on the shield and really just everywhere i think it's a it's a good uh, a good wash for these guys so and then like i said um we're gonna have to cooking show this because this will not dry in time for me to do all the other stuff to it but we'll grab the guy i did earlier let's see how well i match them obviously this guy's still wet but color wise i think i matched them pretty well so, what I did, and what I still have to do on this guy, is, so on the teeth here, I took Rackarth Flesh, and I did another layer on there, just to undarken them after the wash. I then took some Black Templar, and did a tiny little dot on each of the shield eyeballs, so I need to do that here. Um, I also, I think before then, I lightened the eyeball up with Ushapti Bone again. Same color we did the first time. So I'll do that. Then I, what did I do? Did I do anything else? I may not have actually. That might have been it. It might just have been those two things. They were a little too dull. And so I brightened them up just a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Oh, and I retouched the teeth as well. So I'll retouch his teeth. Um, but for now... I'm just going to watch this dry basically, pulling out anywhere the paint is a little too thick, like back here. I'll just pull it out with a wet brush. The wet brush will soak it up and just wipe it off on a paper towel. Come back in, soak more up. And yeah, so we'll let him dry and uh, we'll be good to go. So that concludes this stream. Like I said, he'll have to dry and then I'll do the last couple steps to him. But this is what he'll look like when he's done. Um, obviously, he won't have the tongue. He doesn't have a tongue on his shield, but same idea. Um, but yeah, and then we're going to do all the bases at the end. I'll hopefully do a video on that. We're going to do uh, we're gonna do swamp bases for them, obviously. Uh, and for the Stormcast as well, since they'll be fighting them. Um, speaking of Stormcast, this is the test model I did for the Stormcast. So they're going to be this gold, silver, and purple. 
with a tiny bit of light blue mixed in there for the the wrappings on their weapons. But yeah, so this will be the, the color combination. Um, the orange and purple are good, work well together, as well as orange and blue. So they'll kind of trick your eye into thinking they look cooler than they do when they're on the table against each other because they have, they'll have they have complementary colors. But also I, I like the purple. Um, kind of reminds me of Praetorian Guard from uh, the Roman Empire. And I think they look cool with the, the more silver added in than just pure gold. But yeah, that's it for this stream. Thank you everybody for watching, whether you watched live or are watching sometime in the future. I appreciate it either way. And we'll be back on Wednesday, probably painting one of these guys, the, uh, the Praetors, the new bodyguards of the Stormcast Eternals. Or, you never know, we might paint one of these guys. I don't remember what they're called, Annihilators. That's right. I might paint one of these guys. Either way, thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.